This is the sound of home. Since our beginning, we've been here. You can't put a date on it, it's been forever. Our creation stories say we come from here. We come from the river, you know, we come, we were placed here. The river just pops up there like an oasis. You normally don't think of a desert having a river that size flowing through it. It's wild. <laughs> it's, it's a really strong, wild place. There's history, there's tradition right where I'm sitting. My grandpa and his grandpa fished here, all their brothers, there was a lot of them. And then my dad and his brothers, they all fished here. Our family, our people have always been fish people. It's just been part of who we are. From the time I was four until probably six or seven, when the Spring Chinook came up to Shears Falls, we would camp there all the way through the spring run and then return in the fall. One fisherman in one day could supply 10 families with salmon for the whole winter. My father, he taught me everything down here about fishing and, and how to set the nets and how to dip the nets. Now that's what I'm trying to teach my children. I've heard stories about the sockeye run in here. It used to be really big and uh, that's some of our favorite food. That's what we want to catch now. We've been waiting for that for a long time. In 1964, dams on the Deschutes began producing clean energy for 150,000 homes. The project included passage for fish, but outgoing salmon lost their way, no longer reaching the ocean. After decades of work, PGE and the Warm Springs tribes delivered a solution in 2010, a fish tower that restores migration and water temperatures affected by the dams. Now, as salmon come back to the river's far reaches and temperatures return to natural patterns, the ecosystem needs time to mend. Right now we're in an experimental phase where we're trying to build the runs, but the goal is to have enough fish up here that people can go out and fish for salmon in their historic habitats above the dam. We're constantly working to figure out what it is we can do to make it better for the fish when they come back, looking at ways to improve the fish tower, and also working on the habitat upstream so that they have a good place to spawn and rear. Today we're out here counting spawning kokanee. Kokanee and sockeye are the same species. The difference is that kokanee stay in fresh water, whereas sockeye, they go to the ocean and they come back to spawn. Historically, there were sockeye in the upper Deschutes Basin. With the construction of Round Butte Dam, that population became landlocked and just turned into kokanee. With the construction of the fish tower, those kokanee now have the chance to go out to the ocean and become sockeye again. So having salmon back up here from an ecosystem perspective is important. With them, they bring lots of marine-drive nutrients. Marine drive nutrients are ones that come from the ocean. Another term they're using is anadromous nutrients. You can picture what the salmon are eating. It's anchovies and sardines. Those are pure saltwater fish. They're packing that up in here when they come up to spawn. But it's definitely bringing in calories and nitrogen and other essential nutrients into the system. When you do that, it's like fertilizing your garden. As you look around these forests here, you're seeing nutrients that have come from the shrimp and the anchovies out there. They're getting picked up and used by these trees and the shrubs and the other animals that are up in here. We set up game cameras out here to keep tabs on the wildlife in the area. They're a really good way to put eyes and ears out here. We come out once every two weeks or so, and then we take the card back to our computer and, and plug it in and see what we got. We found pictures of bears passing through here. We're a couple hundred yards from the Metolius River, so there's a good possibility they were foraging on some anadromous salmon that have come up here. There's quite a few critters out here that, that are eating and consuming these salmon as they come up and down the rivers. I hear my osprey out here. This is a really dense osprey nesting area. And you'll hear them do that. That's when you know you're close to a nest when they really go off. They are probably the premier 
fish catching birds. They are really good at it. Fish make a lot of things happy. <laughs> Mill Creek is a tributary of the Warm Springs River, which is the major river drainage on the Warm Springs Reservation. And it is one of the last strongholds for cold water salmonids in the Deschutes Basin, if not the Columbia Basin. There's very few places you can find remnant populations of native fish, wild fish, and this is one of them. As tribal employees, we're taught to think seven generations down the road. So we look to things that allow fish to be produced naturally for seven generations, and what that is, is habitat. So when we looked at this project and, and building it, we found that all the materials we needed for the project were here on site. The boulders, the gravels, the topsoil, the plant plants, and we just needed to rearrange it to get it right for the fish. I think what's going to be cool about this type of project and other projects like this here in Warm Springs Reservation is for me to be an elder man working with my children. And I just look forward to generations knowing and realizing that this is a native way. This is what it's all about, you know, is nurturing and taking care of our fish habitats and the fish themselves and all the environment in which surrounds their habitat. I'm down on the flood plain of Wyshoes Creek and Wyshoes Canyon Preserve, and we brought a group of children out today to do some invertebrate sampling and really get a feel for this place because this is truly their heritage, their legacy. To the extent that we can protect and restore the healthy places, bring places back to life, we improve the ability of these ecosystems, the ecology of this place, to withstand the changes that undoubtedly we're going to be facing in the years ahead. What are some of the names of the specific macroinvertebrates? Yes. Caddisfly. Yes. I was about to say that, Caddisfly. Climate change isn't something that is 10, 20 years out. It's happening. We're seeing shorter winters. We're seeing earlier runoff. We're seeing species moving around. Algal blooms uh, on tributaries. Frankly, we're seeing it all over the Northwest. We have an obligation to do everything in our power to bring these fish runs back. It's important to the ecological function of this place. It's important to the native peoples. And frankly, it's gonna be important to the future generations here in Central Oregon. Whoa! So cool. The reintroduction of salmon and steelhead has given us that opportunity. And it's been a remarkable organizing event. For the last 50 years, adult salmon have not been able to access the Metolius River, the Deschutes and the Crooked River above um, Pelton Round View Dam. Now they are. It's huge. I mean, it's, it's, it is honest to God huge. We as a people need to allow the river to heal itself in its time. I've always believed that I will have great-great-grandchildren someday and I want to leave something for them.